Hello and welcome back. So um, we're about to embark on a slightly longer process where we are going to take some clothing from an asset store model uh, such as this and make it fit an UMA. So uh, what I'm going to be using for this, um, and I suggest you download this so you can follow along, is this rather wonderful free bodyguards uh, set from Bait War. Wonderful stuff. There are four different costumes in there. So once you've done the one with me, you can go ahead and convert the rest of them. Uh, really, really useful. But this will work for almost anything. And what we will end up with, if I press play here, is a set of Uma clothing, which if I look at my play, you can see there they are in my default recipes that we can add to our Uma. So very straightforward stuff. Again, let's just prove that that's real. Take his top off, and you can see this is just Uma clothing. So, uh, like I say, a slightly longer process, but um, it really is worth it. So let's not mess about anymore and dive into Blender. So here we are in Blender, um, and I've opened up the mail starter file from our content pack. Um, just before we get going, uh, there's a few things in here I want to get rid of, because we're not going to use them. Um, and they just serve to add to our confusion. So first of all, the hierarchy is full of all sorts of different separated components. But what we're doing, I'm just interested in using the unified mail. So I'm going to get rid of all of this junk that I don't need for now. Um, and all of that is hidden on these three layers over here. So I'm going to select this one and shift select the other two. Move into the screen, press A to select all and then hit delete and select delete from that option. There we go and you can see these layers are now clear. Uh, let's turn our lights back on and shift select our unified character and there we are. Okay and you can see now our hierarchy is much neater. We're going to be adding some more to that so having that rubbish out of the way makes this all a little bit clearer. So our next step is to import our bodyguard model files. Now I've already downloaded those into a Unity project so I'm just going to import them from there. Um, before I start I'm just going to switch uh, layers. I'm going to store my bodyguard over in one of these. So I'm going to pick this top layer here before I import and that means everything will come in to that layer. So I'm going to go up to File, File, Import uh, bring in FBX file and I happen to have this. I'm going to choose Scale Mesh Bodyguard 3. That's the one you saw at the start there. So when I bring it in, a um, couple of things. First of all, it's unlit, so let's hit uh, Shift and select our lights. And again, you can see here the materials haven't come in. And also the bones are pointing in lots of bizarre directions. Now we're not necessarily going to use that bone rig, but I just want to show you how to fix that because it's quite a common problem when importing into Blender. So I'm going to hit uh, Control Z and again to get rid of that and let's import once again. So this time when I select the bodyguard mesh, I'm going to make sure I go down to the import options here, select armatures and just select these bottom two force connect children and automatic bone orientation then when I import you'll see all of the bones are lined up correctly and yeah it looks an awful lot better you can see there with the fingers okay a um, couple of things that are wrong here so let's just have a little fiddle with him again let's turn the lights on and let's turn on our Uma so one of the big things we've got to do is to get him lined up with our Uma and as you can see he's facing the wrong way at the moment. So um, let's go over to his rotation. So I'm making sure I've got the armature selected here and let's see I think it will be the Z. Yes it is. So I'm going to spin that round 180. There we go and his scale's a little bit off as well. So I'm just going to hit the S key on the keyboard and just scale him up again I'm going to get the top of the hair matching with the top of the head with my I don't have to be hugely uh, accurate with this but 
something like that should do. So he's roughly in the correct position. And straight away you can see there's a massive difference in the actual pose of these characters and the positioning as well. So our task is to get this guy to match up with our Uma as best we can. Before we go ahead and do that, let's uh, get the materials assigned and get this guy looking the way we want him to look. So let's turn off my Uma again and start looking at materials. So if you look at what we've imported, um, you can see there I pointed out the armature, which is Blender's um, rig, if you like, or it's humanoid rig. It doesn't necessarily have to be humanoid, it could be anything, but that's what uh, Blender calls bone rigs. And strangely, unlike any other package, um, when items get imported into Blender, they tend to bundle all of the meshes and the bone rig into this armature. So you can see here there's actually a lot of different components in here. There's uh, some poses and there's a few meshes. If we open it up, you can see here we've got our head, our pants, our shoes, our torso and our hands as well as the bone hierarchy. Okay, might seem a bit unusual but don't worry about it. It's perfectly fine This and we're going to work with that. Um, so I'm going to select any one of these so let's pick the torso and let's have a look at its material so you can see there is actually a material attached to this uh, in fact if we look at all of them they've all got the same material um, in fact this is modeled using the same texture for every component so that's handy um, if we look at the textures there are two uh, this first one should be the diffuse this second one should be the uh, normals Unfortunately, at the moment, they don't point to the right files. So I'm going to scroll down um, with the first one, and I'm going to open up in the textures. We picked Bodyguard 3, and let's have this diffuse file here, the one marked with underscore D. Okay, that's a good start. And let's pick our second texture, and scroll down, and point that towards our uh, Bodyguard 03 normal file. There we go, so that looks something like what we wanted. And because we've changed that one um, material and the others are using the same one, all of the other pieces have worked as well. So that's nice, we're ready to rock. So our next task is to get our bodyguard model to match up as closely as possible with our Uma. Um, now I say as closely as possible, we're just gonna quickly jiggle him around and uh, get somewhere near and we're not going to be super precise purely because they're so drastically different but um, you've basically got three approaches here um, we're going to pick the easiest one to begin with but I will show you the other approaches in later videos um, by far the easiest approach here is to model your own clothing to fit our Uma now our Uma in this file is in a relaxed air pose and this is actually quite a nice pose to model around and to rig with um, as opposed to a strict T pose which uh, a lot of characters come in. So that's the easiest way. Um, we haven't got that because I haven't got the artistic talent <laughs> to actually create something new. Um, what we've got obviously is our, um, our stolen clothing which we're going to take from this guy. Um, so the approach we're going to take is to use the handy bone structure that's in this fella here okay to actually line it up as best we can before we start pushing vertices around to make this fit correctly so this is quite handy that he's got this bone structure in here it's going to uh, make things a lot easier for us in the long run um, the third and slightly more difficult but still uh, I will show you how to do it the third method is to actually move our Uma to fit the clothes. Now, there are a couple of um, things you need to watch out for doing that uh, when we're mapping it. So I will cover that in a separate video. Uh, but uh, that would be the most complicated way of doing things. Uh, it, saying that, it's not that bad. you just got to know what to look out for when you're doing it. So, that said... Let's switch back to our bodyguard and start moving him around and getting him close 
to the way our Uma is posed. So to do this, um, if we have a good look round, what I like to make sure I've got right first is the core or the area around the hips. Um, because this is generally the root of uh, our models, that's the bit I would like uh, somewhere near right. So at the moment you can see the belt is just protruding from the front of my Uma and you can just see the back. Um, that's probably good enough for me. I'm quite happy with that. Uh, we can pull these out and just make that fit nicer. However, when we look up at the top, you can see the shoulders are in a much different position. Um, strangely, the spine is actually lined up, but this bodyguard model, the shoulders are really quite far forward in comparison to our rumor. I'm not going to worry about that. We can quite easily fix that. Um, the legs here, uh, they're not far away, to be honest. Um, in fact, I think that's probably one of the areas we'll fix first. So let's get these bodyguard legs to line up with our Uma. Um, so to do that, I want to open my armature up and let's find my left upper leg. I want to make sure that I switch to pose mode and I'm just going to rotate this leg out to actually match up with my Uma. Um, what can be handy here is to flip into uh, orthographic mode. So I'm going to press five to turn perspective off, one to get a front view, uh, I say a front view, but our Uma is actually uh, reversed, so I need to press 9 to flip the camera around. So these keypad shortcuts are fabulous. That 9 just flips backwards and forwards between the two opposite views. So we'll probably be using that quite a lot. But that gives us a nice, uh, easy lineup. Okay, so I want to rotate uh, this leg outwards to match our Uma. Now we can see here I have my Y axis and my Z axis, so the axis of rotation is X. If I head over to this panel here, you can see my rotation is currently being displayed as a quaternion. Now if you've done any programming in Unity, uh, quaternions are marvellous because they don't suffer from something called gimbal lock, blah blah blah. Uh, awful to understand. So whenever we're doing a rotation, it's much easier if you just switch this to X, Y, Z, Euler, which is probably what you're used to thinking in. So I'm going to rotate around the x-axis here. I'm going to just click and drag and get that somewhere near. Now obviously I'm not going to get it matched perfectly, but for me, to be honest, I think if I'm going to even that out, I want that at something like minus 5. And I'm just going to switch back into perspective mode and have a look at my foot. Yeah, that's that's somewhere near. I'm quite happy with that. So minus five on that leg, that's brilliant. Let's go uh, into the other leg then. So dig through this hierarchy, the right leg, and let's do the same there. Let's switch over to Euler and just rotate in the X. And again, this one, I'm gonna say minus five. Looks good. Um, one thing that will have put a little bit of rotation on my feet, so I want to cancel that out. So let's dig through the hierarchy in the left leg, find the left foot, and okay, it's not perfectly lined up, but I'm going to compensate on this y axis here. So again, switch to Euler, and we're going to go along this y axis. And no, that's not what I want, is it? Yes, it is. Yeah, and we'll say let's put minus five on there and do the same on the right leg. There we go, right foot switch to Euler and just alter that Y to 5. There we go. So for me, that's the legs done. Okay, so let's head up and have a look at this torso. Um, wow, this is way off. I think um, possibly the first thing I want to do is get rid of this weird bend that we've got in the arms. Um, not sure why that's in there. So. Let's again let's close up these leg hierarchies, go up the spine. Here we are, left shoulder and the left arm itself. Okay, um, it's actually the forearm I'm after, isn't it? There we are, left forearm. So we can see that's the X axis that I want to spin round. So again, switch into Euler and let's uh, alter our X and hmm, let's find a nice round number. Yeah, I think 
I think maybe 45 will we get away with that do you think 45 yeah that looks pretty straight yep and we'll do the same to our right arm so let's find the right forearm and it's the z-axis on this one so always look at this little um, gimbal here just to sort of give you an idea switch into Euler and that Z oh, it's not the Z at all <laughs> spin around a bit ah it's X isn't it still so we'll move that back to 45 okay looks good um yeah there's some weird curve on these arms as well we'll sort that out in a moment but I'm gonna switch back into uh, orthographic view and just try and line these sleeves up with the arm of our Uma. Um, so we want, uh, let's have a look at the left arm. And I want to rotate around this Z axis. So again, Euler, let's move that Z and just get that. Yeah, that's some weird rotation on that forearm. I'm just going to get this sleeve lined up where it intersects because I'm going to throw this arm away. So what have we got there? Let's let's say that's 34 degrees. Yep, that's okay for me. Let's have a look at the right arm, and we'll do the same. We'll just rotate that Z and get ourselves to minus 34. Um, I'm actually going to use these little cuffs here as well. So let's fix this forearm just to get it somewhere near. So again, left arm to get that forearm, and again the Z axis. Um, we've already switched this to Euler, so what's that, 23 minus 24, let's say. Yeah, that's close, isn't it? And let's do the same on the right forearm, and we'll say Z, 24. That looks good. From the front, we're in good shape. Uh, if we go back to perspective oh, and zoom around like a madman, let's have a little look. Yep, that's pretty good. Like I say, these shoulders are all over the place, but we will fix that shortly. Excellent. So we are somewhere near. So now we've made our life easier by using this bone rig. Um, from now on, it's basically just going to get in the way so it's utterly useless to us so we need to blow it away and leave ourselves with just the meshes so we can start manipulating them and fitting them to our Uma. Um, so a couple of things you need to be aware of here when we first imported and started um, let's just switch out of pause mode and back into object mode um, if we select the armature itself uh, what you will see is we rotated our character. It also had this weird rotation anyway. And we had a, a crazy scale on there as well. If we have a look at our um, meshes, you can see their rotation and scale is perfectly fine. Okay, so that is being affected by the scale and rotation of the armature. We need to get rid of this because this causes absolute nightmares when we import into Unity. Um, as soon as we start to process these parts into Uma pieces, it will go berserk. So we need to burn this away. So very easy, make sure you've got your armature selected. I'm going to move into the viewport, press Ctrl and A, and that will bring up the Apply menu. I'm going to say Apply Rotation and Scale to the Armature. And what you should see here is everything flips back, so all the rotations are zero and our scale is one. However, that's not quite finished because what it's done is that it's transferred the scale and rotation down onto our meshes as you can see so they've been sent down the hierarchy we don't want this either we want these guys all to have perfect rotation and scale as well so I'm going to go through every single one of these select it into the viewport control A apply that rotation and scale and you can see that resets as well so very very important to do this if you don't it can look absolutely fine when you bring it into unity but when you convert these things into umas they won't fit your uma they'll be massive sizes 100 times too big or uh, something like that 100 times too small i've seen it so many times and it is always this that causes that problem okay 
so everything there now has its scale and rotation reset good stuff so now that our rotation and scale has been applied we need to extract these meshes from our armature so they're no longer being affected by the armature uh, by the bones in any way um, now one of the things we have to be careful of here is they are actually being affected by the bones we, we've just deformed our character using those bones so before we extract them from the armature we need to apply those changes and make sure that they are burnt in to the mesh otherwise it'll just flip back to that horrible T pose it was in so um, let's take the well let me show you if I take that torso to extract it from here we would normally move into the screen hit alt P and say clear parent but you can see those deformations that we just put in have been removed so that's no good let's control Z to get that back and basically what we're going to do if we have a look you can see this spanner here it means there's a modifier in fact you'll see the same thing on the Uma human male mesh there and what this is this is what connects our torso to the bones so if we inspect down here you can see here this is the armature and it's pointing to that bone structure to say this is what's deforming it to burn that pose into our mesh we just need to hit apply here that's great so now when I take this torso move into the screen and hit alt P and clear the parent you can see that pose is burnt into it okay and it is no longer connected to the armature it's jumped outside and it doesn't have this little uh, spanner icon anymore so that's what we need to do to all of these so again head make sure I'm on uh, the little spanner icon here apply the armature into the screen alt P and clear parent so all the way down these like this and the last one the head apply clear parent brilliant they're now just dead meshes so we can get rid of this armature we don't need it anymore so up here right click a delete hierarchy and this will delete everything in there and there we go we've got our meshes which are unconnected and ready to go so one final bit of cleanup that I need to do is uh, it's shown by these little dots that are appearing after our mesh um, so as you learn blender or if you know blender all of these things on here tell you that there's something attached so we we've, we've blown away this modifier here from our models up here but also what we've got here are vertex groups and you'll see again that is on our Uma so we don't want these what they are if we have a look in bodyguard head and look at the mesh properties you'll see vertex groups and what they are are the weights that have been painted on to that mesh that attach to these named bones um, if we actually attach these to an armature with a bone named head they would reattach so um, yeah we don't want these we want to map these ourselves so I'm going to go down with each of these on that mesh panel I'm going to say uh, delete all groups you can see how they disappear from there um, again you can see <clears throat> on the pants here they mapped to a different set of bones but again don't want those so I'm going to delete all of these vertex groups and that should give us some clean empty meshes ready to play with so last one there lovely so you can see now our meshes are just that there's nothing special about them at all so this we will see as we start to remap okay so as I'm sure you'll agree um, we've been through quite a few steps there nothing too complicated but all little things that you need to do if you're going to convert a model to work with Uma uh, so I think that's as good a place as any to take a break uh, and in the next episode we're going to start fiddling around with these vertices and actually get these models to match up with our Uma much more accurately um, okay so thanks again for listening I hope you found it helpful and I will see you next time and once again, I'd like to say a big thank you to my patrons for making this possible. Uh, if you would like to support me, feel free to click that link at the end of the video. Thank you very much, and I'll see you next time.